And welcome to another Coffee and Kilowatts, number eight, if my count is correct. Today I wanted to look at something which I think is, uh, kind of flies under the radar for a lot of people, but uh, is probably really an important part of EV adoption, called uh, simply plug and charge. It's a technology that has been around a little while. You may have heard it in passing in certain uh, charging network videos or some of their news releases, but today I wanted to take a dive into what it is, what it enables, and uh, when we can expect to see it and then the reasons why it could be such a, a game changer for at least for non-Tesla electric vehicles. So let's uh, grab some coffee, uh, dive right into the topic. Cheers. So I'm here at uh, Burlington Mall at the Electrify America station, which has been in the coming soon category for quite some time. Not that soon because it's been at least a year since these stations were put in the ground. And uh, hopefully they will eventually, once the construction here gets uh, completed, and everything else that's going on is blown over, we'll be able to actually get a charge on these things. But today, as I said, plug and charge is the topic. So it's a, a technology which has been built into a lot of these charging stations. Uh, Electrify America announced last year in October that they have the uh, partnership with a company called Hubject, who are the uh, software side of things. They provide encrypted connections, certificates between a car and the charging station. But let's take a step back for a second and look at what plug and charge entails and how it will make life a little bit easier for EV drivers. So if you've driven a non-Tesla EV for any amount of time, you'll be familiar with all these kind of things. Charge point card, uh, we have electric circuit for the time that we went up to Canada and uh, EV go. You know, all RFID cards that we've had from the uh, beginning, pretty much. Um, there's also obviously Electrify America has the app, all the other char the charging networks have apps. So I think in Europe it's even worse, there are a bunch of networks for anyone who wants to travel to different countries. So you start to get many different cards, many different apps, um, you know, all the things that come with the inconvenience of having to carry those things around. By plug and charge, you should be able to simply put that into the car, you know, bake it into the software, have your own personal certificate for the vehicle and an account with the, all of these providers, um, you know, as long as they come on board and are willing to participate, you should be able to uh, arrange that. So that is obviously a benefit. It simply is more convenient. If you can plug in and verify that the charge has started and then be on your way, that's going to save, you know, potentially a minute or two in the best case scenario if you've ever had problems with electrify america stations or evgo stations starting up your charge with the card or the um, payment reader if you don't have a membership then that obviously can start to snowball into five ten minutes and beyond um, so it does cut out that one of those pain points uh, potential points of failure if you're paying by card you have the potential that uh, a lot of gas uh, you know customers face uh, for your card to be skimmed uh, so there's a, a complete you know taking that out of the equation when you have uh, plug and charge in play so another benefit there um, security convenience cutting out a pain point so in, in effect making the station more reliable in that sense as long as it works as it's intended you know you start to uh, bring on a lot of the benefits that a Tesla has uh, where you can just plug in and off you go So long term, would plug and charge mean the uh, demise of uh, screens and credit card readers and all of the accoutrements that we associate with uh, the non-Tesla charging network? Um, no, probably not, at least as far as we can see from California's legislation for all uh, charging stations to have a credit card uh, payment system, something that's easy to use You know, for someone who only has a card and doesn't have any kind of accounts. Um, to make things a universal access, um, an equity issue. If California's legislation is going to lead the way as it has tended to do, you will still need to have those credit card readers in place. But, you know, the main point of convenience is still for people who know and are willing to sign up for the plug and charge system, then it's going to be a much more convenient affair. Um, if you haven't done that or you choose not to for whatever reason, then that will be for you to navigate the vicissitudes of uh, card readers and apps and RFID and everything else that uh, comes with it. So having established that it, it is a way we want to go, what are the barriers in place to uh, plug and charge becoming a commonplace 
uh, system for EV drivers to use. Well, initially there just simply aren't that many models that you know, have the standard right now. So we have, as I mentioned, ISO 15118 is the standard that a car needs to be able to you know, implement this uh, with the charge station. Currently only, as far as I'm aware, the Audi e-tron and the Porsche Taycan and then also the Mercedes EQC in Europe hasn't quite made it to the stage yet. Those are the three non-Tesla vehicles that have that standard um, embedded. It should be into a lot of the Volkswagen Group uh, electric vehicles as they start to come out. And also the Ford Mach-E is uh, going to have that technology. So you start to see, you know, in, in, on the horizon, two or three uh, models plus the ones you've already got. So we need to get those into pretty much every vehicle. And backwards compatibility is a question mark as well that we need to kind of work on. But, uh, you know, it's you have to have those models presumably on the roads before it will start to take off and people will start to say, well, I have this technology, I was promised it when I bought the car, now I'd like to be able to use it. So, um, in Electrify America's uh, announcement of the partnership with Hubject last year, who again are the uh, company that is securing the uh, encryption and digital certificates that the station exchanges with the vehicle, and they said that it was coming in 2020. So obviously that could be, again be down to the um, ability to get the models out there. If those are increasingly delayed, that could delay the rollout of plug and charge. Um, whether we'll see it on things like the Bolt EUV, uh, the next upgraded Bolt EV, that kind of thing. It depends if the if it's being offered as a you know basic feature, which should be in every electric vehicle, which eventually you would think would be the case, or if it's being offered as a kind of you know tech forward feature. So we'll see how that develops. I don't expect it to be particularly quick. These things tend to have a lot of early promise and momentum and then get dragged out over time. But it is going to be a big selling point for a you know, network like Electrify America, which is now you know, much vaunted and uh, deserved in its uh, cross-country status, You know, connecting up those routes. Firstly, the first cross-country uh, public charging network to do so. If someone's going on a journey that's quite that extensive, you want to make it as seamless as possible. And finally, there's the uh, potential to go a lot further. And some of the literature that you'll re read on this uh, technology and the standard, it's essentially the car becoming a payment center. So you have all the details uh, of your billing and uh, potential to, to pay for other things stored in the car, which opens up a, a wide range of potential for paying for drive-through food, takeout, um, using your charging profile to, to connect up to utilities, letting um, your utility know where you've charged, uh, bi-directional charging and you also have a payment standard in your car where it could pay for a bunch of other things on the road and if there's a large screen in your car you know you talk about services um, Tesla has obviously got this down again you look to them for for some of these uh, integration if everything can come through one of the big screens the bolt you know has it now a relatively decent sized screen but if every car is going to go to this large touch display in the middle then you start to have so many different types of application once you get into your car being able to be used to pay for things so it's an interesting field and you know that obviously takes it far beyond the the aspect that we've been discussing of just wanting to easily and conveniently charge your car So a lot of this is in the future, of course, but the technology is there. Models are on the horizon that will have plug and charge technology. So over to you, really. Do you think this is something that would be a game changer for non-Tesla electric vehicles? Um, do you not think plug and charge technology is that attractive? Is it uh, more convenient for you to use an app or to use an RFID card, something that is, uh, you know, in your car and physically you can have available or on your phone that you trust more um, i can't see it myself necessarily but there are certainly you know sides that i might not have considered and if you know the uh, technology itself is that digital encryption of the details that are in your car and the account that's associated with it are those safe or are there other potential uh, danger points that we haven't really considered. Let me know in the comments. Obviously this series is uh, what it is because we get comments back and uh, your own perspectives. Um, I'd love to know what you think of plug and charge, when you think it will be around. Thanks for watching as always. Enjoy your coffee and see you in the next one.